1983, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, published the Hazard Communication Standard. This was one of the first major new standards since the original OSHA rules were published in 1971 and was often referred to as the Employee Right to Know Standard. That's because it was developed to help ensure workers had access to information and training about the hazards of the chemicals and products they were exposed to at work. One of the major requirements of the HASCOM standard was container labeling. But while the standard mandated that manufacturers provide specific information about their products on container labels, HASCOM was a performance-based standard, meaning there was no specific format that had to be followed. As a result, container labels took on all shapes and forms, in part because manufacturers were free to use many different hazard warning and rating systems on their container labels. As you can imagine, all these different labeling systems led to a lot of frustration among workers. The hazard communication standard was not meeting its original intent, which was to help employees know exactly what they were working with, how it could harm them, and most importantly, how to protect themselves. So in 2012, OSHA revised their hazard communication standard and a major part of that revision was how containers had to be labeled. While manufacturers still have to put labels on their containers, now that information has to follow a specific format, and there is a standardized hazard classification system that must be utilized on container labels to convey information about the physical and health-related hazards associated with that product. The HAZCOM standard also requires employers to train their employees on how to read and understand the new GHS labeling system. So the standard changed from employee right to know to employee right to understand. To improve information available to workers, OSHA adopted the labeling requirements of the GHS. That stands for the Globally Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals. The GHS is a standardized system, meaning there will be consistency in the information appearing on container labels once this system is fully adopted. This system was developed by the United Nations, which means that, once fully implemented, container labels for products from around the world will be standardized, which is of increased importance in our global economy. Here is an explanation of the information that must appear on container labels. First is the product or chemical identifier. This may be the name of the product itself or, as in this label, the specific name of the chemical. This information will also match up to the safety data sheet or SDS for the product. Next is a signal word. There are only two that are used in this system, either the word danger, which indicates a relatively severe or immediate hazard, or warning, which indicates a less severe, but still potentially harmful, level of hazard. The next section contains one or several hazard statements. These standardized hazard statements give employees a quick warning about the hazards that are associated with the product and differ according to the classification and category of hazard or hazards presented by that product. The next section of the container label shows what are known as precautionary statements. These too are standardized in the GHS labeling system and in general convey information about how to prevent or lessen exposure to the chemical as well as considerations for storage of the product, first aid procedures to be used when accidental overexposure occurs, and where applicable, information on how to respond to an accidental spill or release of the product, as well as information about its proper disposal. Additional safety and health related information can be found on the product's safety data sheet. GHS compliant labels must also display supplier information. 
This is where you will find the name of the manufacturer or distributor of that product as well as their street address and telephone number. On some labels, you may see supplemental information about the product, such as directions for its use and possibly an expiration date for the product. And a key new requirement of the GHS labeling system, and something fairly new to us here in the United States, are pictograms. Pictograms are standardized icons that alert workers to the various hazards of the product in a container. There are nine different pictograms used in the GHS labeling system. Pictograms will appear on all container labels, each one depicting a different health or safety hazard applicable to the particular product in that container. Some labels may have only one pictogram because there is only one class of hazard associated with that product. However, most labels will probably display multiple pictograms. By the way, pictograms appearing on a product label can also be found on the safety data sheet for that product where you can get even more detailed information about hazards and recommended precautions. The first pictogram we will discuss is an icon of a flame. Obviously, this is associated with flammable liquids, solids, and aerosols and will appear on labels for those products. This pictogram will also appear on labels of products that emit flammable gases, those which are pyrophoric, which means the chemical can possibly ignite within minutes of being exposed to air, self-heating chemicals, self-reactive chemicals, and organic peroxides, which are found in many products such as catalysts and curing agents. This pictogram of a flame over a circle identify materials that are classified as oxidizers. While similar in appearance to the flame pictogram we just covered, oxidizers are actually materials that cause or contribute more oxygen to the combustion process, making other materials burn much more rapidly than they normally would. So care must be taken to avoid storing these products near flammable and combustible materials. The third pictogram depicts an exploding bomb and appears on products that are explosive. It can also be found on labels for self-reactive products and for organic peroxides. The compressed gas cylinder will appear on labels of cylinders of compressed gas under pressure. Care must be taken when handling these cylinders because in the right conditions, a broken regulator or valve can cause the cylinder to become a projectile. Also, when a compressed gas leaks into an enclosed space, such as through a leaking hose or crack valve, the gas can fill up the space and cause an oxygen deficient atmosphere. And some gases are liquefied so they can be placed inside a cylinder. Some of these gases rapidly expand and cool when released from the cylinder and can even cause frostbite injuries if the gas makes contact with any part of your body. The corrosion pictogram will appear on labels affixed to containers of corrosive chemicals and products. Obviously, getting something corrosive onto your skin could cause a chemical burn and the same could be said if you get any into your eye but these products can also be corrosive to metals, which means they could corrode containers and other articles made from metal, causing them to break or leak. The skull and crossbone pictogram identify chemicals and products that present an acute toxicity hazard. The toxic effects of overexposure to these poisonous products could even be fatal in the right doses. Acute means the effects happen relatively quick as opposed to over a long period of time, which leads us to our next pictogram. The health hazard pictogram identifies toxic chemicals and products that can cause health problems over a long period of time, such as carcinogens, which can lead to cancer, mutagens, which can cause alterations in your DNA and affect your offspring, reproductive hazards, 
which could affect the ability of men and women to have healthy children, respiratory sensitizers, which could cause you to have an allergic reaction when exposed to that chemical at even low levels after you have had an initial overexposure, chemicals that can cause damage to or affect the function of certain organs, and aspiration toxicity hazards, which could lead to the development of chemical pneumonia. A very broad category of chemicals and products are identified by the next pictogram, which is an exclamation mark. This symbol is associated with several products and chemicals that, relatively speaking, represent lesser levels of health hazard, but still require you to take precautions. For example, many chemicals and products are considered an irritant to your skin or to your eyes, while others can have a similar effect on your respiratory tract when they are inhaled. This icon also covers chemicals that could cause you to have an allergic skin reaction after subsequent exposures, and some of these chemicals could have an acute effect on your health that, while less severe than those identified by the skull and crossbones pictogram, still require you to utilize precautions so you don't suffer any ill effects. Chemicals that have a narcotic effect on your central nervous system are also categorized in the exclamation mark group, as are any products that have a harmful effect on the ozone layer. Although OSHA does not enforce the use of this pictogram for ozone damage because it does not directly affect the health of workers. And finally, this last pictogram appears on labels of chemicals and products that are considered toxic to plants and aquatic animals. However, while this pictogram may be required by other agencies to appear on container labels, OSHA does not enforce the use of this pictogram since it will not directly affect the health and safety of exposed workers. As previously mentioned, at least one, but in many cases, two, three, or even more of these pictograms will appear on the labels of containers of chemicals and products covered by the OSHA Hazard Communication Standard as well as on safety data sheets. So read them and heed them as you will need to be aware of the hazards posed by the various products you use at work. Also, keep in mind that pictograms are not intended to replace all other hazard identification symbols as some of those are required by other government agencies such as the Department of Transportation or Environmental Protection Agency so you may continue to see them on containers along with pictograms and in addition to containers of chemicals and products that we purchase from vendors employers will need to make sure that all in-house labeling systems incorporate the required information by the deadlines established by OSHA. Speaking of deadlines, here is an overview of some very important dates. The revised hazard communication standard, which requires the use of GHS compliant labels on containers, was published on March 24, 2012 and OSHA is giving manufacturers and distributors of hazardous chemicals and products until June 1st of 2015 to make sure all containers display the updated labels. However, many manufacturers and distributors are already starting to use compliant labels on their containers or will be doing so long before the due date. So OSHA requires employers to get a head start and begin training all of their workers on how to read and understand those labels and they have until December 1st of 2013 to get that training done. On a related note, employers must also update their written hazard communication programs by June 1st of 2016 to reflect the changes brought about by the adoption of the GHS system of labeling and hazard classification. So in review, the revised OSHA Hazard Communication Standard requires GHS compliant labels to appear on all containers of hazardous chemicals and products. 
Those labels are standardized in the information that must appear, including the display of all applicable pictograms, which are visual icons that identify the various classifications of hazards associated with the products and employers must provide training to all affected workers so they understand the information that appears on those labels. If you have any questions about the GHS labeling system or about the hazards of the product you work with, contact your employer safety representative or feel free to contact the safety professionals at OSHA Training Services.